This is Consensu, the podcast, episode 328 for the day of March 30th, 2013, Battle of God's Day. Us or the Consensu des. Welcome to Consensu, the podcast. We are here, Battle of God's Day. Day. We are kind of like all over the place in terms of what is the structure of the show? What are we even doing here today? So forget all of that usual stuff that you're used to hearing, except for the fact that it will be a pretty usual episode. My name is Mike Vegito EX and joining us on this fine March 30th evening over in Japan, Julian. Us. Battle of Gods, man. Yes. So <laughs> I saw it bright and early this morning at nine o'clock, managed to get permission from my wife by um, <laughs> That's always important. getting up early and making pancakes for everyone before I left. All right. Well, we'll come back to your adventures. Also joining us, not in Japan, uh, but equally excited, I think, probably even more so because he can't go see. It's that like uh, the distance makes the heart yearn more. Heath Hujio, man, what up? Ohio. How you doing? I'm good. Everything's awesome. I think it's, uh, it's been a long week. I hear it's you, man. It's been a long month. It's been yeah. a long couple months. Uh, I know how the feeling uh, is. But I am just ready for spring and to move forward. <laughs> Cherry <laughs> blossoms are yeah. out. We actually hit uh, some really nice temps, so that's been nice around here. But other than that, you know, just doing the fatherly thing and trying to keep the website from <laughs> destroying us all and crashing. And yes, yes, yeah. yes. I actually, I got up three times last night oh, to check God. the website. Did you? And Luckily, Julian had sent me a tweet, so I reset the server at one point. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's what's going on with Julian over there, Heath over there. My name is Mike Vegito EX. I have gathered folks here. It is March 30th in both countries at this moment. Yesterday was March 30th ahead of us, but it is March 30th in both places. We are so excited to finally be here. Battle of Gods, the first theatrical Dragon Ball Z movie in 17 years, has opened today over there in Japan. We have been bringing you all sorts of coverage from the opening because Julian's an awesome guy. If you've been keeping up with us, you've seen photos, you've read our detailed synopsis of the entire movie, if you want to spoil yourself. So we are here today to do a variety of things. We're going to catch up on news, and a lot of that is Battle of Gods, so we're attacking you from all these different angles. We're going to do a sort of uh, storied review of the movie. I think we'll keep the detailed synopsis out of this episode, but we'll of course give you a little breakdown of what the actual story is if you want it. So we'll uh, continue to give spoiler heads ups as we uh, move onward into the episode. We got a lot to cover this episode. We got the news. We got that topic. It's 11.15 uh, p.m. over in Japan right now. So we got to get cracking here, guys. Let's do some news. All right. We missed an episode last week. I had a sinus infection. Uh, Heath, you were out of town, I think. Yes. And yes. Julian... I'm not allowed to remember. sleep anymore. Right. So <laughs> you, you were just working. You weren't yes. allowed to do a podcast or anything. Right. So <laughs> we missed that. Luckily, that wasn't this week. So we are going to catch up on a bunch of stuff here. Because we have so much Battle of Gods material, we're going to uh, scale back on the extra discussion and editorializing a bit on the news because there's just so much stuff. But uh, we do want to keep you up to date, especially as we look to the future and people go back and like, I got to listen to every episode ever. Well, we want to at least <laughs> give you a chronological progression through Dragon Ball history. So let's get it going here. Uh, we learned about this earlier in the month. Dragon Ball Tap Battle launched on Android. The official website opened. Let's kind of combine a few stories here as we move on. So the website opened. It was set to go live on the 25th, I think it was. Uh, I don't think it quite hit that date. I think it was the 26th in Japan when it finally did launch. Heath, this was your beat and unfortunately this thing is region locked it is which i was not happy about really yeah Ew. i went to download it and it says this is not compatible with your device and then it gives you a reason your device is not in the correct country for this program <laughs> wow. like so, you've got to be kidding me so the way they do so, it in japan is you need to have 
an account with that particular country's iTunes store. Right, right. So in my case, you can actually create an account without giving your credit card details as long as you have a gift card. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. If you're on iOS. Yeah, and this is all through the Google Play Store, which the way that is set up is there is just online, there is one store. So I can go see all sorts of apps and programs, but I cannot install all right. of them. Well, that sucks. Only ones that are available <laughs> within my country. I guess you can go through the process of rooting it and like sideloading it or whatever the phrasing is yeah. to do that. But uh, I guess you're not <laughs> willing to do that for tap There's battle. There's ways to trick your phone yeah. into telling Google that you're in a different country that you're not really in. Right. But uh, yeah, it requires that you root your phone. And I have unfortunately not done that. And I did a little research and I would not like to lose all my contacts and information. So <laughs> Gotcha. All right. So we'll probably just stay tuned for the iOS version. It's obviously, yeah. Julian will be able to grab it immediately. And then, I don't know, I'll just have you grab me a gift card or something. And I'll just load it up that way as well. So that'll be easy enough on iOS. So Heath, you lose. I do in every way. <laughs> all right. So that's Tab Battle. Uh, it sounds like it looks interesting enough. I know our uh, buddy on the forum, Super Saiyan Prime, linked... Uh, to the Google Play Store itself, where it shows sales, and it did about 500 copies its first day. Um, 500. 100. Million? No, no, no. Just 100. Oh. <laughs> well, it could have had 501 if they'd let me. I know, right? God. telling you so we'll uh, keep our eye on that and see how right. that continues to uh move forward but uh i think we're waiting for the ios version at this point right so um i handled this next piece of news so i guess i'll jump in and do this one yeah yeah so 18th march again so it was monday the issue of weekly shonen jump that came out continued uh the ongoing q a segment which we uh which we uh mentioned i think the last podcast episode but in addition there were a couple of other things uh there is this commemorative watch for battle of gods which is this nifty well it's a watch but it's it's got a dragon ball motif with a four star ball on it and silvery and orange and only 9999 copies will be produced and i forget what the price was but it was posted somewhere it's several tens of thousands of yen so it's more than i'm willing to pay but it still looks pretty cool and um the other part of the news right here is i i guess this is maybe only going to be interesting to you if you're into trains but there's the upcoming exhibit the world of dragon ball which is going to be held when it comes to osaka at the hanshin department store and in conjunction with that the hanshin railway is doing their own promotion for the movie and for the exhibit so uh, i guess i should say also private railways in japan have this thing where they often have their own department stores that happen to be near their various terminals so hanshin railways their their terminal it, they have two terminals in kobe and in osaka so that's why anyway um now that i've given you that background so basically they're having an umeda to sanomiya dragon ball stamp rally now, a stamp rally is this very Japanese thing where you have to go around to different places and stamp a card or a flyer of some kind. Uh, so there's a special flyer that you can pick up at any Hanshin railway station apart from two stations on the Mukagawa line, which are unmanned. And you take them to two stations. There's Sanomiya and there's Umeda, which are the terminals in Kobe and Osaka, respectively. And if you do that... The first 2,000 people to come to either OS Cinema's Mint Kobe or Umeda Berg 7, which is in Osaka, by the 16th of April will receive a free admission ticket to the exhibit that's going to be coming to Osaka the next day, the 17th. So that's pretty cool. And they also say that by showing the same flyer with the stamps at the event itself between the 17th and the 23rd, you also get original stickers. But again, it's only limited to the first 2,000 people. There's also going to be announcements at each station, courtesy of Son Goku, voiced by Masako Nozawa. Uh, now, I, I should also note that the one-way fare between Umeda and Hanshin Sandomiya is 310 yen. So that comes out to 610 yen altogether. And the price of the exhibit itself is 500 yen for adults. So you're actually going to be paying more admission if you do the train promotion. But, you know, it's fan cred, I suppose. And Peking it's Duck... It's all for fun. Peking Duck dutifully carried it out. 
and he got the free <laughs> ticket. Of course. He said it was worthwhile for having done the experience and also because he got to have some very nice gyoza in, Ta- in Chinatown in Kobe. Oh, there you go. I, I mean, just hearing Goku tell you to get off the train, right? Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Although I think it's just the, the station announcements. So it's, oh, okay. gotcha. it's not in the trains itself. So gotcha. that was right, pretty that, that's it, right? interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're into trains and I, I like trains, but I rarely have the opportunity to ride on Hanshin because I'm in a different part of Osaka. Anyway, moving on. All right. So we're kind of jumping all over the place here. We hit a whole bunch of content that is not really news, interview translations up the wazoo. So what we're jumping here to, uh, we're going to cover this twice, is Dragon Ball Heroes Ultimate Mission Weekly Sales. We're up to the third week here in the news. So we know the game started off with about 88,000 copies its first week, then it did about another 22,000 copies its second week. Then on its third week, it was hanging in there. It did about uh, a little over 11,000 copies. This game is, uh, for Dragon Ball anyway, kicking ass and taking names, and uh, I do want to come back to it when we cover the fourth week sales for it, so hold on to that. Uh, Heath, I'll let you take the next one here. More and more stuff for Julian to buy. Of course, that seems to be the ongoing theme these days. We have the official guidebook for Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. Uh, That just recently dropped. It's actually a special magazine released by Weekly Shonen Jump, so... It's kind of limited, kind of not. I'm not sure exactly how long it'll be in print. So if you do want to get it, I highly suggest you go. I know recently we've had a lot of people report that CD Japan for a while had no more copies available. So if you do want to pick it up, we've got links for you. Follow the links. You can go grab it. Yeah, I think they got more back in last time I checked. Uh, And then also along with that, and hopefully what we thought would be the final push, which turned out not quite to be, unfortunately, for Julian. <laughs> uh, we had DVD and Blu-ray Vision magazine hit Japan, which had a nice little insert booklet. Uh, I believe it was about 16 pages with interviews. And the magazine itself featured a brand new illustration we had never seen from animation supervisor Tadayoshi Yamamuro. So that was really nice to see. If you pick that up as well, it came with a bunch of movie production sketches and notes interviews of course the classic interview with masako nozawa who is now everywhere in every single magazine in japan saying the same thing yes yes she's incredibly consistent but if you do pick up the official movie guide it came with story and character descriptions rough sketches from toriyama uh, a new exclusive poster which you can also get by ordering v jump i believe yes april issue yes but of course issue this is the b five size official movie guide so you're getting it the same size as the page but in the v jump it's b2 so let's see doing the math it's much bigger yes doing the math b4 is double the size b3 is quadruple the size so yeah the so if you really want a big one pick up v jump v jump has eight times the size as the poster as it is in the booklet so anyway those are those things and of course we will hit more magazines coming up but uh, we did have an interesting article um, that Julian had the pleasure of translating yet again uh, that hit us that Battle of Gods was aiming for 3 billion yen at the box office. This was a, a really interesting one because we get not just what they're aiming for, but exactly who the target audience is that they're aiming for at the same time, which I think people might find interesting. Yeah, I, I agree. Just that the fact that they're going for not only uh, fans who know the series, who grew up with the series, but very much the sort of... Uh, the generation that's grown up with the video games and Kai and especially things like Dragon Ball Heroes. And it seems like a very deliberate push not only to introduce them or get them more into the series, but also introduce them to the more comedic elements of the series. Mm, I, I really like the quote here about, you know, a lot of kids are getting into it through the video games and they're talking specifically about heroes here, as we can see from the arcade game doing well and the 3DS game doing well. And they're saying they only know the battle. So here's all this other stuff. And we really hope that all these types of fans come to see it. Yes. So I think that's really interesting. And, um, it seems like they're going to really be pushing this throughout the month of April and maybe into the first part of May. They're planning on a six-week theatrical run, and today obviously being the first day. So we may be in for a few more weeks of sleepless nights. We'll see. <laughs> Mostly right. me. So what do you think about the 3 billion yen target? Well, I, I think that it's... I mean, we haven't had gross numbers for the other movies to really compare to. Yeah. But it seems like um, a particular... Well, it's also in a different 
realm really of what the other movies were yes and i mean considering that they're aiming for a broader audience this time they're trying to pull in people who have a great sense of nostalgia for the series they grew up with as well as the fact that simply tickets are ludicrously expensive now i yeah. think it's it's definitely possible but um and it's looking like um there's quite a bit of interest in the movie at least as far as this first day is concerned, you've got tweets on Twitter about people um, going to the theater and finding that it's already full for the time that they want to see it. I had the foresight to reserve my ticket last night before I went to the theater, and I think if mm. I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have been able to get one. Oh, wow. Yes. So Well, we'll get planning. to that. Hold your stories. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we're, we'll definitely you know keep our eye on that and continue to update uh, with figures as we move on. So let's keep going with the news here. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, V-Jump this month was... Not quite as packed as it had been, actually, but Julian, it did have the seventh chapter of Dragon Ball Heroes Victory Mission, yes. and it seemed to wrap things up. Uh, well, at least this well, current at least story the arc, but yeah. it's going to continue, I'm assuming. Uh, but it, it is worth mentioning that while it is uh, the chapter, there is something else via Toyotaro in conjunction mm -hmm. with Naho Oishi. They had a joint interview directly after seeing a preview screening of the movie, and they're giving their thoughts about it and exchanging their own, th uh, you know, imp impressions. And I, I am planning on translating it. There's just other higher priority things in the docket right now, so I hear please, you. please be patient. We're not done with V Jump yet. <laughs> I guess what we can say about that is I I'm interested in hearing what they have to say about the movie but i'm far more interested in them talking about themselves i want to learn more yes who uh, are these people and where are they coming from and how did they get involved and ah oh, someone yeah. track them down it, unfortunately they talk mostly about the movie which yeah. is part of the reason why i haven't done it yet uh julian why don't you just give us a rundown of some of the other stuff in there i mean it's okay. the usual expected uh 3ds you get a qr code some yes. sketches from the movie promoting other magazines that kind of stuff yes so the cue card they give you a little bit um of information so you get uh you get a qr code that opens up the beerus mission the god of destruction and it also works with the regular Dragon Ball Heroes arcade unit. Then you can choose from four mission types, and that'll get you another QR code. And I guess they sort of go back and forth like that. And this is different from the QR code that's included as a bonus for the movie, but we'll get to that as right. well. And it just uh, gives a, a small shot of uh, basically character model illustrations for Beerus, the different facial expressions and how he should appear and uh, I think a lot of people were sort of surprised at how, dare I say, cute this <laughs> this villain is turning out to be. Yes, very animated. And I, I can vouch so for that speak. personally. So. Yeah. Well, awesome. he's based on Toriyama's cat. Yes. <laughs> Toriyama's going to make his cat look cute. Well, very nice. Definitely. And then, of course, we had that uh, B2 size poster. Oh, yes. That was... Which I am waiting for in the mail. <laughs> yes, it's, nice. it's still sealed in my copy. But um, I'm f I'm debating with myself whether I should take it out before I send the magazine to Mike. <laughs> I know we always talk about this where it's like, all right, we have all these V jumps. Do we take the stuff out of them or do we leave them in there? I'll just buy two copies, whatever. <laughs> I, I vote for taking it out and then sending it to Mike. Yeah, I, I see how it goes. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I will send you the preview booklet for the full color comics. How about that? All right, cool, cool. Okay, so anyway, preview of Super Saiyan God. And there's also another interview with Masako Nozawa and Shokotan in the back. And I will get to that too. Like I said, there's other things that are higher priority. All right, let's keep charging forward. Uh, Heath, why don't you give us a rundown here? The Japanese iTunes store updated with uh, everything we knew was coming, but also uh, some preview clips. Yeah, this actually uh, kind of caught a couple people by surprise, I think. We had been keeping an eye on it for a little while because it had been posted that this was going to happen. Uh, but a number of websites were set to stream all 17 Dragon Ball theatrical films starting on March 15th, and the iTunes store was one of them. However, in addition, the iTunes store also included all the digital editions of the Tonkobon, so you could pick those up either color or in black and white. And they did have the um, Flow single, or I guess I should say double A-side single, Right up for sale so you could purchase that as well which came out march 20th but in addition to all that uh what caught a lot of people's attention was a full-length clip of two different scenes from the film put together um 
it was a lengthy clip at that, which was nice. We had one scene of Beerus and Uis just talking, and then we had another one with some action, some fighting. So you really got two different aspects of the film all in one, and that was kind of nice. So a lot of people posted that all around, and it made its way all over the interwebs. Sure did. All right, so uh, you probably already checked that out, so we'll just keep charging on forward here. Uh, I guess you guys also, a whole bunch of other commercials. The one that we highlighted here was the Frieza and Cell one, talking about, ha, new movie, you're in it, you don't have a line in it. Yes. It was awesome. Pretty hysterical. I laughed so hard the first time I watched this. Yeah, the uh, Wakamoto at the end there, I can't even hope to... uh, duplicate his amazing performance where he kind of does that deep throat rolling of his syllables in anger it's pretty amazing so there's that (laughs) yeah yes but as you mentioned that was one of uh numerous new tv commercials that we've posted and you can go over to our battle of gods page and watch all of them as we've cataloged them righto Yes. All right, uh, continuing on with the news, real short one here. Uh, as I said, that not to be outdone by Anne Amazement, who's got a wonderful trio of voice actors. Anime North up in Canada, the same weekend, Memorial Day weekend, has Ryo Horikawa coming to uh, enjoy the convention with folks. So if you're up hmm. in Canada and are feeling upset that you can't go see Nozawa, Nakao, and Furukawa, well, you've got Vegeta up to hang out with you up there in Canada. He will sing Cy and Brad. He will sing Cy and Brad. No, I don't think they're saying he's going to sing it but uh of no, cyan brad fame yes uh, what, is it, what 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 convention was it that called it the theme for dragon ball kai i don't remember he was at a couple cons last year what was it uh anime expo and awa last year so i think it's just someone with his management company that's sending over these terrible transliterations of things and the conventions don't know any better so they're like oh yeah cyan brad that's the name of the song <laughs> Great. I guess if you don't <laughs> now know, there really, there needs to be a sign that shows up. I, uh, He's just named Brad. You're right. Someone, come on, fan art, get going. If you don't know, the the actual title of the song is Cyan Blood, which is written out in our alphabet on the Dragon Ball Kai CD. So there's really no getting around what it is. But. Anyway, all right, we're moving on here. Uh, Project Versus J was an update coming soon. The official website for the game, we we really hadn't had any updates in about three months. It felt shorter than that, but apparently it was that long. Uh, In 10 days, is a new hero going to enter the fray kind of thing? And so we said, all right, 10 days from that day, that would be a Monday. What comes out on Monday? Weekly Shonen Jump. Okay. Uh, Well, we anticipate that Jump would have information. And of course, Jump always leaks early through these enterprising individuals over in Japan, and yes, indeed, uh, Naruto Uzumaki will be joining Project vs. J, which, as we jump ahead in the news, will now be titled J Stars Victory vs. So, Julian, you said that most of the text here was just hype promotional stuff. Yes. All it really says is we don't know when it's coming out, and there will be more series. Basically, yes, it's going to be more and more characters from other series joining the battle. So look forward to it. So uh, right now we have Toriko, One Piece, Dragon Ball Z, and Naruto. And specifically, that's the Shippuden era with a little bit older Naruto. So that's your news. We'll keep our eye on it and uh, we'll come back to it. You know, it's really weird to see that it's the 45th anniversary of Jump. Because it, it, it seems like just yesterday it was the 40th anniversary. I and know. we were getting the JSAT special. And also now it's the 45th. And you're like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I've been in Japan been for a long five time. Years? Yeah, you, you know, it's going to be the fifth anniversary of the Jump Super Anime Tour special that we'll be revisiting this year. And oh my. Isn't that crazy? What What's happened? What has happened? Um, Things. Things have happened. Yes, I'm starting to worry about my hairline. That's what's happening. <laughs> I think all of us are. <laughs> All right, let's skip ahead here. Uh, the Q and A's. This is more. This is more content than news. We've been keeping up with uh, the. Please tell us. Akira Toriyama Sensei Q&A's in Weekly Shonen Jump. We had number four and five in last week's issue of Weekly Shonen Jump. Julian, I think you said that this week's actually does have a sixth one, right? Uh, From what we've heard from rumblings of the internet is that it's going to continue, at least for this week. Um, It may. There may be more. Um, It could be going for as long as the movie is in theaters. We really have no idea at this point, but we will continue to dutifully catalog all of these answers as they come out. 
So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm going to jump around real quick and cover this. Uh, get back to Dragon Ball Heroes Ultimate Mission. It's fourth week sales. It fell off the media create list, but the Famitsu sales list did include it down at number 22, doing uh, just about another 9,000 copies, 8924 there. So Ultimate Mission has done over 100,000 copies in Japan. And uh, as I've noted in a couple other updates, Previous portable games for the franchise that came out in February of its year didn't hit 100,000 copies by the end of the entire calendar year. Ultimate Mission has done that in a month. So you can see why Toei is like, we got to go after the kids. They know this series through video games. So, uh, guys, well, and specifically through heroes. Right. You you think this kind of speaks volumes about the uh, current generation of fans over there? Well, I definitely think there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, in that sort of elementary school and junior high school age set. They weren't directly exposed to the original series. They have some experience with Kai. That's true. It's all indirect familiarity. And I think especially the tone that the movie is taking, although we know from various interviews, which we can talk about later, about how Toriyama was instrumental in directing the tone of the film uh, for his own, both his own sense of what Dragon Ball should be as well as after the earthquake two years ago. But uh, mostly I think it's essentially trying to take, you know, all these different eras of fans. There's nostalgia for the older fans. There's cool fights and comedy, trying to get new fans into the fold and introduce them to parts of the series that maybe they're not familiar with. I think they're really, really pushing that. And um, so far, it looks as though they're having some success with it, but we'll see how those numbers do probably sometime next week. Yeah, I mean, think about how much we've been covering the financials for Toei and Namka Bandai over the years. I mean, the last peak was 2007, and then it just took a nosedive. And it's crazy coming back around again. So we don't have a whole lot of analysis for you just yet. We're going to keep our eyes on everyone's quarterly figures and uh, the the movie figures and intake and all that jazz. Uh, We're going to wrap things up with one more story here, and then we're getting into Battle Oh God's Julian story time. This last one here, I think this is kind of going to set the stage for the movie. Uh, And then we'll probably come back to a lot of this material in a more focused kind of topic later on. But I think this one's important to cover because we've been super big into this. We we really want to know what are the name puns behind Birusu, God of Destruction, and Uisu, his attendant. We had some initial theories which were shot down by scriptwriter Yusuke Watanabe on Twitter. Yes. Uh, then there were some other theories floating around. Then there were some romanizations and transliterations on merchandise, such as beers, which fit in with our original thoughts. So we're like, hmm, were we actually right? And Watanabe was just being coy with us. And uh, well, now we have total, complete, accurate answers on this. And there's kind of two sides to the story. There's the, okay, the the name puns are what they are. That's interesting. But then there's a back history to them that doesn't even tie into them anymore. So, Julian, why don't you tell where uh, where this all comes from? Yes. So this comes from the May 2013 issue of the Get Navi magazine, which covers, as the title might give you a clue, so it covers like various uh, household items and all this other stuff. I'm not really that familiar with the magazine because I don't normally read it. Uh, but this particular issue is telling you all the best stuff for your home electronics, basically. Uh, anyway, but the hi- highlight, of course, for us is this insert booklet that has interviews with, uh, once again, Nozawa Flo and Watanabe. And I think Watanabe always gives the most interesting interviews because he has this sort totally. of insight having written the script. But um, the most interesting thing is um, he's uh, talking about, uh, well, initially there was already talk about uh, Super Saiyan God, and, but um, the name of the enemy or for this film, the, the villain, Beerus, God of Destruction, is something that he came up with himself. And he says he tweaked the word virus, uh, which in um, Japanese is most commonly wirusu, but can also be birusu among certain technical, uh, especially... Um, Professions. M- yeah, medi- in, in terms of uh, medicine, particularly. Uh, so he tweaked that to get the name Beerus, and then uh, Toriyama came up with Wis using the more common pronunciation in Japanese. And, you know, 
That's interesting. There's another interview that he also gave in uh, DVD and Blu-ray Vision, which I am in the process of translating. That part is actually done, but I'm, the interview with Nozawa in that issue is just so long. Um, so I'm still working on that. But anyway, he talks about how there were these... He, his initial story treatment for the film was that Beerus was actually a really evil guy who was responsible for making the Saiyan evil, that he, he gave them evil hearts. And I guess extrapolating from there, you can see how perhaps, well, he makes people evil, he infects them with evil like a virus. Mm-hmm. Which, so we, all right, so that's where Super Saiyan God probably came from, yes. the original concept. Yes, and the way he words it in his other interview in here in Get Navi is that um, he almost that he didn't expect the name that he gave to stick. Yeah, he said something. I can't remember. Uh, I could bring it up actually. Hold on, I have the magazine. Virus wo mujitte, virus wo to nazuke tara, sore ga seishiki kette sarechatte. So that sarechatte is sort of he. So they decided officially that that was going to be his name, but it sounds kind of like, you know, he thought maybe they'd come up with a better one or something. So it seems like this this name pun for both Beerus and Whis is sort of orphaned from this earlier concept that got completely discarded. And it's interesting, uh, we can talk about it a little bit later too, but the the idea of Super Saiyan God having been something... Uh, created among righteous scions fighting against the evil ones, that maybe that also tied into an earlier version of the script where Virus tied in much more closely to the history of the, the scions. Um, of course, all that discarded, and I think maybe for the better in terms of the, the overall plot, but it's interesting you still have these sort of hanging threads left over. But anyway, so now that we have the official puns, we decided on spellings that we're going to use across Kanzenshu. And I, I, we're not really taking the easy way out, but basically we, we shaved the U off of the end of both of them. <laughs> right. So I, I guess, Julian, can you explain for people, because I've seen a lot of, well, I don't know how to pronounce this now. It's basically exactly the same as before, like you said, without the U on the end. Why are we not saying virus? Um, well, that's because the... Well, for one thing, in Japanese, it's pronounced virus. Right, well, there you go. But it's also based not on the English pronunciation, which is pretty much non-existent in Japan, but mm -hmm. on the German pronunciation, virus, so, uh, which was rendered in Japanese as virus. And then uh, wisu comes from virus, which is based on the Latin pronunciation. Remember, of course, uh, not ecclesiastical Latin, like that's used by the Church of Rome, but classical Latin, where um, there was no letter V, and in fact, both U and V were the same letter, which was pronounced U on its own, and as a sort of a W sound um, in between and before other vowels. Of course, there was no W at the time. That was a later development in English as a ligature of two U's or V's next to each. Anyway, uh, that's not relevant right here. Well, yeah, it is. That's why we keep you around, man. Never mind. <laughs> Good stuff. So, Beerus. <laughs> yes, that's why. And we, that's what we're going with. That's what you see. And, uh. <laughs> hey, folks, Mike cutting in here. Of course, the way it always goes with the podcast when we're done recording, something comes up that is super important that we feel we need to insert back into the episode. We just got done talking about how the absolute official 100% name pun confirmations have been been declared for Bidusu and Wisu. Well, guess what? Turns out that's not entirely full of a story. So like we were saying, it started in uh, Yusuke Watanabe's Get Navi interview where he named Beerus after the word virus. There was this original story. I already can't remember what we said, what's going to happen in the podcast. The original story was that Beerusu was going to have been uh, responsible for infecting the science and creating this 
evil race idea thing going on. And a lot of that was abandoned. Yet the name still stood, and the name pun source still stood. And we knew that while Yusuke Watanabe had named Bidusu, it was Akira Toriyama that named Uisu his attendant. And so we thought it made sense. Hey, the word virus in Japanese, like you just heard, has these two different word versions, and they both work for the name pun source. Well, Toriyama just had a new New interview with the news site Asahi, and here's what he said: the name Birusu I used as is from the story outline. Anyway, it's apparently a name that was taken from virus, but I mistakenly thought it came from beer and gave his attendant the name Wisu, which I took from whiskey. Ah. Uh, Huh. This, I mean, if you've been following content, you this goes all the way back to our original thoughts on these name puns. We were kind of half right. We thought Bidusu actually came from Pilsner, which is a type of beer that still kind of works. Uh, it could have gone either way there. And we thought, all right, well, Wisu, that came from whiskey as well. So we were kind of half right where we were going. But we completely abandoned that idea because we reached out to Yusuke Watanabe on Twitter and said, all right, here's what our thoughts were. This is pretty early on. Is this true? And he came back to us with, that's not the source. And then this interview with Asahi goes on to state from Shueisha. Uh, Shueisha gives a supplemental explanation that officially beers comes from, Bidusu, comes from beer and whis from whiskey. So there you go. You've got almost these two sides to the story where Yusuke Watanabe had created the original name pun for Bidusu that came from this original idea for where the story would have been heading, and that just stuck through. And Toriyama came in, and there's almost like this miscommunication or lack of communication to what each was thinking when they were naming these characters. So there you go. We've got these two sides, two sets of name puns that both still work independently from each other. So let's just carry on from here. That's going to bring us to a close. Are you guys ready to talk about Battle of Gods? Yes. I got my water. Let's do this. I got my coffee. Let's hit it up. All right, Julian. So uh, Battle of Gods is awesome. Tell us how awesome Battle of Gods was. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Why don't you, uh, as we love stories, take us through uh, your morning heading on down to the theater. Yes. Well, I had determined from a while back that I was going to see it the first day it came out. I was really hoping that I'd be able to see it on the, the opening day. So I was making plans and I tried to get to the preview screenings as well, but I was not selected. So <laughs> You I, were deemed not worthy, right? Yes, I was very, very envious of Kay. And I think he went twice, actually. Okay, he went on the 12th, and then he went to the paid preview on the 20th in Shinjuku. So he saw it twice, even before it opened, and I was uh, burning with wanting to see the movie myself. But I had the Super Collaboration ticket left over from December, November, November, which I previously used when I went to see One Piece Film Z, and I got to use it again. Now, I had the foresight, as I said before, to reserve a seat um, for the movie the night before, because when I got there this morning, it was already lined up. But first, I should explain. Uh, so I woke up at about 6.30 this morning, made pancakes for my wife and my daughter, because I kind of promised them that. I figured, you know, whatever it takes to get me to go, you know, doesn't hurt to sweeten things. A little bit. We all have to make sacrifices, Julian. Well, I got to eat the pancakes too, so it wasn't so much of a sacrifice. But anyway, uh, rode my bike up to Abeno and went up the escalator to the entrance of the movie theater, and there was already a really long line, a lot longer than there was for the pre presale ticket that I got back in November. Uh, so that was the first sign that it could be generating a lot of interest. So they opened up the doors around 8.20 and everybody started filing in. The line for people who did not have reservations was probably about 25 people deep. I mean, some of these people were children accompanying their parents who would have been getting tickets for them. But I looked at the seating chart on the internet the night before, and there weren't that many seats left for oh, the wow, first okay. screening at 9 o'clock. So 
I think there was another one that was going to be happening half an hour later at 9.30, which maybe some of those people would have to go to. But if not for having the foresight to reserve that ticket the night before, I don't think I would have gotten into the earliest screening. So I got my ticket. Uh, I went back down to the convenience store to get myself some tea because there was time to kill and they hadn't opened the doors to that particular screen yet. And I came back up and hung around. There was a big crowd of people forming. And then about 10 minutes to 9, they finally opened the doors and we started filing in. Now, there was a bit of a misunderstanding where... Um, <laughs> Your attacks were hilarious, yes, by the way. They, they handed us the Dragon Radar case and the four-star Dragon Ball pen. They did not hand us any cards and the parent of the child who was in front of me starts really getting irate at the theater attendant, like, where's the card? Give me the card now. <laughs> and and the attendant's going, well, I'm very sorry, sir. We only have these to give you right now. And finally, a few minutes later, the, uh, there's a different attendant who starts going through the crowd and saying, oh, you haven't got this? Here you go. And starts handing out the cards. I think maybe they just sort of had them, you know, either separate. Just separate. Or yeah. in different places, and they needed to get them there. But there was this uh, moment where I was thinking, is this going to become some kind of episode <laughs> kind of freaked me out while that was going on i was sort of looking through my battle of gods theatrical program which i picked up for 700 yen at the uh little uh goods kiosk at the theater there's a bunch of other merchandise that you could also get there was uh the sort of clear files that you can stick papers in there was what looked like Dragon Ball magnets and mm -hmm. some other odds and ends, uh, which were, you know, kind of neat. I think there was like a medallion type thing as well. Gotcha. Um, well, Julian, I'm going to stop you right here. Two things. One, yep. um, you want to tell Heath something? Uh-oh. I was really nice and I decided to get you a program too. What? No way, <laughs> Julian. Well, you know, I, I, I can be nice sometimes. Oh, you're nice all the time. All right, so that's number one. <laughs> number two, Julian, uh, as you were flipping through it, you said, oh, okay, great. It's going to new quote from Toriyama. Uh, right before we started recording, you're looking through and you're going, oh, other interviews. You figured they'd be the same as other books. Nope, they're all entirely new. Yes, so they feature <laughs> most of the same people as the official movie guide, but they're different. All right, so uh, let's pause to uh, role play here. Could you please be Akira Toriyama Sensei for us? What does he say in the <clears throat> official movie pamphlet for Dragon Ball Z Kami to Kami Battle of Gods? Okay, so he says, Dragon Ball no anime aiga wa nanto 17 nen buri da so desu. Konna ni nengetsu ga sugite shinsaku wo tsukutte morairu nante ouen shite itadaite iru katagata ni kansha shinakute wa ikemasen. Kore made animation wa kihon teki ni subete wo omakase shita kara story zukuri kara sanka suru no wa boku ni wa hajimete no kokoromi desu. Nani shiro Dragon Ball wo kaite ita no wa zuibun mukashi no koto desu kara omoidasu sagyo kara hajimenakute wa ikemasen. Mattaku to itte mo ii hodo miru koto mo nae jibun no komiksu wo hippari dashite パラパラと呼んでいると年を取っても殺が原作者だだけあってすぐに当時の感覚を取り戻すことができました。今回の破壊神ビルスとスーパーサイヤ人ごとという まずビルスのキャラ作りや設定を決め、連載に続きがあったらと想定してオリジナルストーリーを考えてみました。今回珍しく自主的にデザインも変えた破壊神ビルスはこれまでの敵とはさらに次元を超えた圧倒的に強く
。スタッフの皆さん、本当にご苦労様でした。これでは久々のドラゴンボールを楽しみください。So that is far longer than、uh, most of the other quotes we've gotten from Toriyama, so I'm very interested. Could you、uh, do your on the fly translation for us? Okay, so apparently it's been 17 whole years since the last Dragon Ball animated movie. To be able to have this new movie made after so many years and months have passed, I really have to thank all of the people who supported me. Up till now,、uh, for the animation, I had, basically, or I had basically left it up everything uh, to um, the anime staff. But,、uh, so, this is the first time for me to have really tried to start、uh, or participate all the way from making the story.、Uh, at any rate,、um, it was a long time ago that I drew Dragon Ball, so I had to start with、uh, remembering everything. I brought out my Com- my own comics, which、um, I almost never do. And when I was reading it, while I have gotten older, being the original creator, I was able to get back to the feeling that I,、uh, of, that I had back then. For this movie, the God of Destruction, Beerus, and the Super Saiyan Jin God keywords were something,、uh, a suggestion by the scriptwriter. It was a really good idea to be able to express. I, I thought it was a really good idea to be able to express a kind of pinch or trouble for the vain characters who had gotten to the point there was nothing stronger. So I took this idea and first、uh, decided on the character and the story for Virus. And then I made,、uh, thought up an original story based on the idea of what if there was a continuation to the original manga. So this time, which is rare for me, I, I designed Virus myself. And he is really、uh, an opponent who is unbelievably and overwhelmingly strong in a completely different dimension from the other enemies up till now. But my. My hallmark is to not let things get too dark. So, at the very least,、uh, it's, I believe it was finished up as、uh, a fun work, and I am satisfied with it. By the way, the battle scenes in the second half are unbelievable. It really, I was really moved at, at the expression of, that was, exceeded all my expectations. Although I had expected it would probably be no good, it was really completely different from that、uh, live action movie from a certain country that really was terrible. That just goes to show you that Japanese animation really is the best. So thank you so much, everybody and the staff. So please enjoy. The first Dragon Ball in a long time. So finally, he gives us his real feelings about the live action movie. And I'm sorry that that took so long. No, I mean, it's on Transla- the fly. Ju- I'm translating on the fly and I'm tired. Julian, didn't I just read something that you translated where Toriyama said something about the live action movie turning out spectacularly? Well, there is a different way to read that. Uh huh. The, the, he said, Tonde demo naku sugoi. Now,、uh, tonde demo nai and sugoi both have good connotations and bad comi- to,、uh, connotations. And、okay. while the good connotation is mostly used, the other meaning of sugoi is terrible, like inspiring terror. So it's sort of, he, he gave a polite compliment that could be read as incredibly backhanded as Got well. It. Got、um, it. Got、okay. it. So, was the other one more vague and this one was more direct about it? This, this, this one was incredibly direct、okay. <laughs> in、Got、terms、it. of his criticism. <laughs> All right. So, to be reading that, it was okay. So, he really did hate. Okay, so the other reading, I guess if you're going to assign a tone to it, would be something like, and that turned out spectacularly. Yeah, basically. Okay. Got it. <laughs> All right. So that was wonderful to catch up on. So here we are. We're basically at the point where you're seeing the movie. Now we have our d- very, very, very detailed synopsis. You can read a blow by blow of the entire movie if you want to. We are hitting spoiler territory right this second on the podcast. If you don't want to know anything about the movie, run. Just drop your phone, 
drop your computer if you're holding a computer because you know you walk around holding yes, a desktop. Drop your computer. Just throw it. Throw it right now. Throw it at the. Throw it up against that wall. That wall is right next to you. Exactly. And uh, head for the hills. Julian, could you give us just like a, a couple sentences the the themes and the general plot of the movie? So I think overall the theme is that um, let's see how is it so, <laughs> friendship and family. <clears throat> Friendship, family, uh, destruction may be a necessary part of the universe, but it does not necessarily mean it's evil. There's always someone stronger than Goku, and Goku is always going to seek them out. Uh, Goku has the power to uh, bring people onto his side. Yes. As long as they're not irredeemably evil. Um, And Vegeta really cares about the people in his life. And he (laughs) did something that's going to upset some fans, but I think was absolutely (laughs) hilarious. And for the circumstances was actually maybe in character. It it sounds uh, wonderful. I know after the preview screening, Kay said it was the the best Dragon Ball movie ever. Do you uh, agree with that sentiment? I think in terms of the themes that it presented, in terms of the character interaction, um, the other movies are pretty predictable it doesn't waste any time Mm -hmm. on character interaction because you assume that they know who they are and it gets really into the action it it seems like toriyama comes out so much more in this movie than the others and the other ones are so much shorter yeah yeah. which is hence why they're very predictable yes well it's not just being short it's i think the the audience that they had in mind, which of course was children. Uh, But the fact that it was always an evil bad guy who does evil things and Goku has to stop them and save the day. You know, this one is very different, both in structure and in the way he deals with the bad guy, the way the bad guy presents himself, and also the conclusion. But I won't (laughs) spoil too much. Even just the fact that that Beerus comes to the party... And actually stays for a while and just yeah, uh, hangs out. I mean, he, he's a god of destruction, but he does not destroy things because he's evil. It's kind of his job. It's it's what he is. And he's also very capricious. And there's always the chance that if you don't get on his nerves, that he might decide to spare you. So, you know, everybody's working very hard at keeping him entertained and for a while it's successful well i I guess let's jump in here then we had a whole bunch of predictions about the movie number one being lisu's going to be uh makayoshin well at least for now that's shot down who knows what the future holds for us but there's julian nothing about that what not even the tree nothing right no he's he's sort of the the straight man to beerus's funny man Uh uh he's very much a gourmand, similar to Beerus trying new foods, and he's quite enamored with sushi. <laughs> right, that was um, hysterical. And yeah, it, he, in many ways, is the comedic foil for who's technically his boss. Right. Um, he does not seem evil. I mean, he has the prerequisite white hair and blue skin and overly polite speaking patterns and yes, this shall you destroy the earth now kind of thing. Yes, but. At the same time, there's no hint of malice. There's Uh no evil smirk. There's no secret sinister laugh. There's there's nothing at all that indicates that he's anything more than the loyal assistant slash, I guess I shouldn't say the next part. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's not like the when he does the chop at the end, he's like, all right, go to sleep for three years. There's no, like you were saying, no turn to the side, evil smirk, and yes, master, I will, you know, gather the rest of the Makayoshin now. Nothing like that. Nothing. Okay. So that's shot for now. But uh, another yes. one of our predictions was that Boo is going to be the one to cause an international incident and <laughs> throw Beatus into an irate rage. And that's that kind of true. Yes. So, uh, can I say this? Yeah, uh, well, yeah. If you if you if you read the synopsis, it's there. But basically, um, Beerus wants to try the custard pudding that uh, Boo has in front of him, and Boo, being Boo, is says, "No, they're all mine." And, <laughs> and do- doesn't he licks them all? He, he licks, licks them, them all. Yes. So yes, it's like uh, the very much the child. In... <laughs> no, you can't have them. Blah, 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 blah. See, they're all and mine now. That's him. Yep. Yeah. And so, is that really the trigger? He's like, all right, bitches, it's on. Yes. 
It's like, <laughs> I'm not having fun. This is it. I'm going to destroy the earth now. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I guess tell us a little bit more about the whole party scene. I mean, we knew pretty much going into the movie all of the opening stuff from the trailers, from Battle of Gods, SD, and Psycho Jump. That was pretty straight. I mean, with a couple little extra jokes here and there, but that's all exactly as we expected, right? Uh, pretty much. I mean, things work out a bit differently from the SD yeah, version, yeah, sure. but it's basically the same thing. Um, I thought the party stuff was a lot more involved. And I think it goes back to a quote that Nozawa had in one of the interviews, how people are using the character voices for the background, sort of uh-huh. just the crowd noise. And it's true that you can hear the characters talking in the background as the characters and not just random crowd noises. Nice. And it's always a nice touch. It, I can't remember. I think in terms of characters we don't hear, I think it's maybe only Chaozu who doesn't have any lines. Mm, okay. But there there are a few characters who don't get much screen time but actually still have a fair amount to say, just not on screen. Right. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Pilaf gang here? They were hilarious. <laughs> okay. I think <laughs> I mean Chiba is always spectacular. Yes. Shigeru Chiba is, well, he's Pilaf, of course, but he's very much the highlight, but the others play off him very well. And it's just hilarious the kind of character interaction they have. Now, you can get into arguments about the timeline, about how this makes GT fit with this movie and, you know, Mai's age, but I thought it was hilarious all the way through. Were the little interactions with uh, a younger Mai and Trunks specifically, it was that uh as awesome as we kind of figured it might be yes that was hilarious okay great <laughs> it sounds like everyone had fun comments about it and the uh the the threats at gunpoint just remind me so much of earlier dragon ball where they send goku into the fray and goku's you know up against these villains and the villains think they can take this little kid and goku just kind of stands there with this dumb look on his face like huh yeah, basically. Julian, why don't you tell us a little and again, we're in full on spoiler territory here. If you're here, you want to know this stuff. Tell me a little bit about Super Saiyan God as a concept and as an execution in the movie. Yes. So I think Super Saiyan God as a concept is an interesting one. And I think uh, <clears throat> it was actually in- executed fairly well. Although and and particularly what struck me is the way that in spite of Goku attaining this whole new realm of power, he feels dissatisfied with it because it's not something that he attained by himself. That he's very much the kind who believes that he ought to be able to do things through training and making himself stronger. Now, as for the backstory behind it, I think that's a bit of kind of a thing that comes out of nowhere, the idea there's this righteous mm. scion fighting against the evil ones. Is that all just the leftover stuff from earlier drafts, but it became, the concept became so integral to the story that they almost couldn't take it out or do something different? It, it um, almost feels that way, but at the same time, while it feels like something that's there to move the plot along and not much else, it, at the same time, I thought it's very effective at setting a backdrop Mm-hmm. And um, the the interaction between Shenlong and Beerus is also very funny. In in that respect, I don't know, it feels a little bit thin, but everything around it is just so well executed that you kind of excuse it, is how I feel anyway. Mm-hmm. It does make you kind of wish they would expand on it just to see what it was like. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I think uh, in order to move the plot along, it is very effective. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. So uh, I also enjoyed the bits with Super Saiyan God. I thought the the way the fight was executed was very interesting. I mean, we had this little bit of detail already that I can't remember if it's an interview that's up on the site yet, but... uh, (laughs) Right, you've read so much. In spite of him being a god of destruction, the fight that occurs, nothing is actually, like, destroyed, or at least nothing man-made. So that you, you have this incredible fighting choreography that you can see what they're doing and it does have a a slightly maybe a a bit of a slow motion effect or the idea that they're moving much more quickly than everything around them Um, but you can see the interaction what they're doing towards each other Mm -hmm. while they're moving very quickly and I thought that was a real big step up in the animation at the same time the 
they're just flying all over the place and going through these different uh, locales and through a forest and over water and down underground and into space. And the, some of the CG is kind of, um, I, I guess, conspicuous. But at the same time, it really gives a sense of motion and depth that really, I think it really serves the fighting scene in particular fairly well. Could you compare the overall animation to some of the more recent things like the Jump Super Animator special, uh, episode of Bardock, Plan to Eradicate the Super Signs? Those were all clean and high def and stuff. Um, we don't actually know if the Jump Super Animator special was made in HD because there's only DVD, but uh, I mean, some of those things, when they when it hit the fight scenes, they would get very well animated. I mean, episode of Bardock, uh, Bardock versus Chilled is pretty spectacular, but but the, the yeah. rest is kind of still from what we've seen of trailers and stuff. It seems uh, overall a step up from that. Is it a similar thing, though, where it gets into high gear? It's just beyond exceptional. Uh, when it really gets into high gear, it is really, really good. The other parts, I think, are, are more animated than the other specials that we've seen recently. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's definitely a lot more going on. However, it does feel occasionally like maybe they took a few shortcuts, but I'm not necessarily sure it was for budgetary reasons. It, it almost seems like maybe there were some things that hadn't been decided yet, but mm. they decided to work get underway. Like gotcha. the scene where Kaio is explaining uh, who Beerus is on his planet. He's, he's driving he's silent, around, right? Well, he's, he's, he's driving around on his planet with a car. It's kind of silent. Uh, and there's part of it where you see from afar the car driving around the planet and you kind of think, well, maybe they were going to have a few more close-up scenes on their faces or something, but they either ran out of time or they didn't know exactly what they were going to be saying yet. Uh -huh. Something like that. Um, overall, I think it's fairly consistent throughout, which is pretty good. And... There's never a point where you feel like things are being held still in order to avoid having to animate stuff. Okay. It's just that sometimes the angles maybe aren't ideal and maybe that's related to the production process and not necessarily taking a shortcut for the sake of taking a shortcut. Uh, we lost Heath for a while, but he is back with us now. I am. The magic of the... Resetting the modem. Yeah, uh, your sound quality is a little lower, but you're recording on your end again, right? Yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, so we've been talking about Super Saiyan God. You're going to have to come back to the conversation yourself and listen to it. Uh, and then we were just wrapping up with the animation. So uh, is there anything you want to toss out there, maybe even in terms of questions for Julian about that kind of stuff? Well, from the trailers we've seen, I know a lot of the animation is really nice. And I think it's something I could get used to, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. over the coming years. Um, without looking at the credits myself, I'm not quite sure of if I have too many questions for Julian. Okay. Yes. Other than uh, because I caught the the end part of your discussion right there. Okay. All about right. Animation quality. So let's uh let's keep jumping around, Julian. What else about the movie or the story itself really stuck out to you, and uh, you kind of took home with you there? Uh, well, <clears throat> just the idea that I think it really solidifies Goku's own personal philosophy in a way that the other movies don't necessarily touch upon very much. And that no matter what, he's always working to better himself. That he is always seeking out a stronger opponent, but ultimately the one he's trying to best is his own personal limits. Mm. That he's always trying to overcome those and he wants to do it his way and he wants to he wants to come by it fairly that he wants to break through his own limits through his own hard work right that was really interesting about super saiyan god where it's yeah i have power and i'm doing okay but this isn't what i wanted yes and at the same in the same way i think uh, they really make an effort to tie it into the way that he always seems to manage to get people on his side yeah yeah no matter what well, except if they're really just terrible. Just completely irredeemable, sure. Yes. that In some ways, it ties in the same way. He is just such an earnest character. He There is not an ounce of guile or malice in him. That, you know, even when he is overcome by rage and becomes a super saiyan for the first time, you know, it's it's a righteous rage. It's not, I'm going to kill you. It's, 
you know, I am going well, to... It turns into that. But he, At that point, it does. Yes, but he wants to fight this person. He wants to best them. Mm. He wants to show that they're not the best. And, you know, you're going to Well, that's how it arguments. started out with Frieza. Right, yeah. right. But then it really did turn into, I am going to kill you well, for it, what you just did. It was really up and down because the transformation seemed to be, again, the earnest thing. And then it immediately turned into, I am going to absolutely destroy you. This, just everything, every ounce of power just slammed the hell out of him. But then it also transitioned into, no, teleport everyone else off. I'm going to stick around and fight this guy. So I, I kind of feel like we had a little bit of a conflict there, but uh, Toriyama maybe evened out that uh, concept uh, idea of who Goku is going to be as a super sign as he was writing it, which takes us back to all of our previous conversations. But it sounds like there's a pretty clear idea about that now that is self-consistent. Yes. So I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And that it really, I'm not going to say it maybe not fits in with, but it really solidifies this philosophy and sort of makes sense of a lot of Goku's actions over the course of the series. Yeah. And in that respect, I think it's very internally consistent with itself, even if it's not necessarily consistent with the rest of the manga at times. Right. And most of that is just dates that people are spouting out, right? Yeah. Um, I think uh, both Mai and Bulma give ages which are not consistent with the ages that they should be by this point. Mm -hmm. And it's not treated as, oh, them being coy about revealing their true ages. It's almost as though they accidentally let slip their real age when they shouldn't have, but except it's not their real age because it's impossible because they should have been older than that before the Boo arc even started. Right. Well, I guess this takes us to uh, one of the biggest questions, and this is for all of us. And the question is, is this what we want going forward? We've had so many things over the years. Uh, when we had the Jump Super Anime Tour special back in 2008, we all said, yes, th this is what our types of fans wanted, which was uh, a nostalgic, funny look and take on the series that was really about gathering your friends back together. We've had five years since then, and yeah, we've had a couple little things here and there of various quality, but like Toei was saying, where we have the older fans who know the series in and out, and we have the younger fans who know just the battle side of things, they wanted to create a story which would encompass all of that, and it sounds like this movie does do that. It does the battles. It does the nostalgic, yay, our friends are all back together. It's got the comedy side of things. So, Julian, you're probably in the best position to answer this, but Heath, you and I, I mean, we've read everything there is to know about the movie at this point. Julian, I'll start with you. Is this what you want? Would you take more of this? I would take more of this, and I, I think uh, it does have a good mixture of everything that makes the series what it is. It has comedy, it has character interaction, it has action, it has dire circumstances, even if they don't always feel particularly dire. <laughs> um, just, I, I, I really enjoyed it, and I think that while there may be some people who become very upset about certain things that either happen to characters or arguing about power levels or this, that, and the other. I, I do think that if you don't come away with this with a big smile on your face, you may need to re-examine your priorities. All right. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, is that your take on it, Heath? You, you want more, and how much more do you want? Oh, man, that's that's a tough question. How much more can we handle? I think. <laughs> well, there's two, there's two levels to <laughs> that. There's the consensus <laughs> side where it's, can we handle documenting all this stuff? I think we should get some interns or something. <laughs> but yes. there's also the, as fans, is too much of a good thing a bad thing? And we, I mean, th we haven't even seen the movie yet, but we're we're pumped right. we're ready to see it how much more and how spaced out do you think this can sustain itself at an appropriate level of let's just say goodness i think at least for us coming from a nostalgic standpoint because we're we're square in that 20 to 40 i mean we're right, right in the middle of that 20 to 40 category they're looking at i think yeah. for us you know it will never be exactly the same as it was but it gives you a nice glimpse into what it was so i don't think 
you want something, you know, continuous all the time. Mm-hmm. I do think we need those breaks, those buildups. I do hope we get more movies. I think they'll need to spread them out, you know, by a couple years probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely keep Toriyama involved. I, I think that it, we've seen from interviews with uh, Nozawa and Watanabe that really what made this movie was Toriyama's involvement, mm-hmm. that he wanted to go away from the darkness, even though he's commented before that he liked the Bardock special, but he even said, that's not something I would have ever done myself. And I think we got that case again this time when Watsonabe came up with his original concept of what he wanted to do. Right. I can't remember if it was last episode or if I didn't even say it on the podcast, but it was that, oh my God, what was I thinking? And Toriyama comes in with these other ideas about, we can't have it be this dark. It's got to pull this kind of thing into it. And yeah. to have someone, I mean, he even says, I am of the Dragon Ball generation, which Flo <laughs> consistently says <laughs> over and over as well. But it's, yes. it, he felt like, yes, this, now this, this, this is Dragon Ball. Yes. Now. And hopefully, maybe Watsonabe has learned from that. So the next time this comes around, he he has a really good understanding of what Toriyama would be looking for. Mm. But yes, I want more. I think everyone, as Julian put, should want more of this. If you come away thinking, oh my god, this completely contradicts all my power levels, and so now I hate this movie, just sit down and watch it and enjoy it, because that's really what it's all about is just enjoying it with your friends your family and that's a lot of what toy has pushed this for the three generations and people have said it throughout all of their interviews so far of they want you to go with your children or your parents because everyone think about how long dragon ball has actually spanned yeah i mean just just a time frame so yeah i i want more I want more. And I haven't even seen it yet. And that's yeah. really, I think, what has drawn a lot of us in. You just read about it and you go, oh, my God, I want to see this so bad. And I haven't even seen it yet. That, that's yes. the thing. I mean, Heath, you and I have read, like I said, everything about this movie. And we don't feel like we've gotten the experience. Like, there's still more to it that we can get out of it. And I got to say, of all the things we've had over the years, and they've all been interesting situations where the Jump Super Anime Tour special, we basically got it immediately with Japan. Yeah, there's the Jump Festa screening, but that streaming online was near immediate and it was subtitled. So there was no wait. It was an instant gratification thing there. An episode of Bardock and Plan to Eradicate the Super Science. I mean, some staggered releases. You were able to get them relatively soon. For this, it's been such a long lead up and the slow drip of things. This has been one of the only times that has brought me emotionally back 15 years ago to oh, definitely. when I was getting yeah. into this and the learning more and more about the plot. Just like I said, that slow drip of things and piecing together the story as we learn more and more things similar to how it was for us when we bought the manga in Japanese out of order, when we bought our fan subs on VHS out of order, piecing it all together and creating our own stories in our head as you actually got to hear on the podcast over the last half year, year as we've learned about the movie. Uh, it's It's... So interesting that we now have our own uh, increasing, growing, wrong ideas about the movie documented like that. I haven't had those kinds of feelings in probably 15 years. And it's uh, I'm so in love with this franchise and these ideas. This is the kind of thing that can sustain my fandom and keep me going despite all the work that we put into the site that should kill us and keeps us from actually enjoying the series as most other fans get to do sometimes and i don't mean that as a well we're konzenshu and we do stuff different but it is kind of different sometimes it's just what it turns into for us i'm just julian like you said just that smile on your face. I haven't even seen it. And I'm just constantly beaming as I think about it. I mean, the the whole time I was going through the synopsis with Jake and we're getting this whole thing typed up. I mean, I can't tell you how much my face hurt by the end. You're just smiling the whole, like you're going through and it's like somebody reading it for the first time, except we're putting it together. Yeah. It's just like, 
this happened uh, and oh wait now this ha- oh my god he's doing what and i literally and, laughed out loud as i yeah. was proofing it and oh it was just amazing and it, it's those feelings that like you said a lot of the recent stuff we got you don't really get that you're excited there's something new but i think this just takes it to a whole new level i'm ready bring yes. it <laughs> so how do you feel about having all of this um commentary from the cast and the staff there from the beginning that uh to go along with it has that deepened your appreciation do you think oh absolutely especially everything we talked about this episode with the original idea behind beerus uh i don't even think we talked about originally going to be a lizard design and super saiyan god was originally going to be more muscular with a cape with a cape and just hearing about how that all was shaped by the different people that did shape it and how that turned into the final story i have such a deeper appreciation and again it's so different from the prior movies which were all double Double, triple features just to get kids together on vacation. This was a, let's call it a proper story with a true beginning, middle and end, uh, a real story to digest. And I, I feel like I've learned so much about all the various people involved with it. Every, I just have such a deeper appreciation of everything and everything makes me smile. Well, and just think about it from the standpoint of when we live right now. I mean, when a lot of these other movies came out, even if we had been around and the website is what it is today, we didn't have access to what we have now. I mean, we can get on Twitter and we can talk to the script writer, ask him questions. Mm -hmm. Well, he probably thinks Julian's a crazy person now, but... Well, yeah, yeah, probably. Yes. Uh, After after I um, had a multiple series of tweets about the timeline issues, which he says, well, um, I'm not really allowed to talk about that. But still... Yes. The fact that he was able to answer and so quickly and shoot us down when we were wrong, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Love getting shot down. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it's the script writer who's shooting down your pet theories, you know, it's it feels it's okay. like an honor. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Just, just how Vegeta says in the movie, I, I suppose it's an honor to be destroyed by the god of destruction. I, I cannot wait for the home release we're just uh, i am gonna snatch that blu-ray up so fast i'm approaching speechlessness just because i'm so excited i'm so happy i'm so glad that the movie turned into what it did because it does sound like it's it's for us and i'm uh, just so happy i'm so happy yeah guys i'm happy i think we're all happy all right. And tired. Yeah, and tired. Julian, it's late for you now. Heath, you and I got stuff to do today. Uh, we got holiday plans to get ready for. I'm going to edit this entire episode today, which is going to be interesting because I've got to do, you know, pre and post work on three tracks of audio and edit Heath back in after he left the recording. So this is going to be a fun one. I kept recording. Oh, you did? So it's just a giant blank spot, okay. but it's there. That's better okay that's yes. good that that actually saves me a bunch of time i'm excited about that so let's call it quits here there is still so much more for us to talk about i think at some point in the future after we finish translating everything and by we i mean julian i would love to uh, re-attack all of the plans for what the movie and story were going to be and reassess how that affected the final film and the final story. I mean, we talked about the lizard, the muscles. There's apparently uh, an extra a whole bunch of minutes of uh, other side character involvement or non-involvement in some ways that there could have been. There's just a lot more for us to weed our way through. Books and magazines continue yes. to come out. I mean, there's It was going so to be Kredin and Number 18's wedding originally. Right. I mean, think about that. There's so much stuff that we, we could almost have an alternate version of the movie and think about how that could have worked. So there, Battle of Gods is out, but we are not done with it. We know you folks just want to just constantly hear about it we are glad to provide it to you you know that we are the best source for it julian tell the kids kan zen shu yes we can be found on the internet at www.kanzenshuu.com 
Except no substitutes. That's right. It's been a grand time. Julian, you did a hell of a job, so I'm going to a little, little bit of applause yes, for you. Yes, I will applaud as well. <laughs> it's not over. It's not over. <laughs> I still right, have so many applause. things well, take, to translate. Take, take your Sunday off. Yep. I, okay. I think you deserve it. <laughs> I'll try and get the lyrics for the new song finished by next week. They are kind of done, but I want to figure out better ways to say some things. Gotcha. Well, I mean, think about that. There's uh, the CD single. My review is like halfway done on that. So you got that coming. The soundtrack uh, has shipped. So I'll be doing a review on that. What else? We got all the magazines coming on. Uh, I don't know. I just have this revolving shipment pattern from CD Japan going on. Where every day I come home, like, what did I order? Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I have no idea which packages are going <laughs> to Which show one up. is this one? <laughs> so please, please, please enjoy all the content we continue to have coming your way on Konzenshu. Uh, Heath, any final words for the folks out there? Uh, Final words? For this week, anyway. Oh, for this week. Okay. Well, it's upon us. It was Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. We're all in love with it. Mike especially. I hope he still has pants on. And we will see you guys next week. Adios. All right. That's it, folks. This was episode, I don't even know, 328, 328. of our podcast here at Konzenshu. We'll hit you back next week with 329 post Battle of Gods. We are in a new age here at Konzenshu. We love you. We love Battle of Gods. We love Dragon Ball. We love everything. We're so happy. This is great. See you next week, folks. I was really hoping... Hoping... I was. <laughs> it's been one of those days. Yes. I was really hoping. Well, I said it again. <laughs> oh my God. Let me try again. And Goku says, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" <laughs> that's what Goku really? says. He says that. Yes, that's what he said. No, I did not. No, know there's that another was announcement. There. <laughs> that was amazing. God, uh, when did when did Goku get a potty mouth? I don't remember. Pretty this. early on. Uh, Bulma, why do you quiet. have those balls? Where's your tail? <laughs> All right, you ah. good? Oh, this is a really long announcement. Did... Okay, there we go. Because they know <clears> that <throat> you're says... not working.